So for the past two weeks, I have been building a bird hatchery for my farm. And that's not to say the project hasn't had a few problems. Oh no, Whew, that was close. The measurements you gave me are completely wrong. Uh-oh, it's not gonna fit. Oh boy, guys, change of plans, change of plans. But in today's video, we are going to finish the project and I'm gonna complete the bird hatchery on my farm or perhaps die trying. What do you think, Ginny Barncat? Is it gonna be possible? Good morning, Abby Dog. How's it going, sweetie? How are you doing this morning, huh? Good to see you, where's Toby Dog? Oh, there's Toby Dog. How's my dogs? How's my dogs? Good to see you guys. How was your night last night, huh? You? Yeah. It sure is a windy one today, huh? Those ducks are sure are loud, aren't they guys? All right, Abby, you gotta be on good behavior because we're gonna let the birds out. Come on. Good morning, birds. How are you guys doing, huh? Good to see everybody. Let's see how we're doing on our goose eggs for this morning. Oh boy, I see a couple here. We got one, we got two. We got three, we got four, and we got a random chicken egg here too. Huh. So lately I've been having good luck using these old hoop hoop doors as like little nesting areas for the geese and they've, they've definitely gravitated towards using them. These four eggs I'm gonna actually bring inside, pack in a box and ship them off. I think they're going to a farm out in Wisconsin. I'll sell a four pack of goose eggs for about $70 a box. And right now we're in the egg selling part of our season for goose eggs. But I will say, because I've just been getting a lot of emails on this and I haven't had time to respond to everybody, we're actually sold out on goose eggs for the rest of the year. We might sell some in like late June when I'm done hatching, but I've got so many orders right now that I'm basically filled up from now until April, which is when I'm gonna start hatching the goslings here on our farm to begin with. Which is the whole reason I've been building the hatchery in the first place. Oh, would you look at this? These chickens are already trying to jump the line and steal the food. This is for all the birds, not just you girls. Come on chickens, let's go. Back inside, let's go, come on. I don't know what we're gonna do with these chickens, Abby. Release the quacken! It definitely seems like the birds have spring fever. Yeah, they're pretty energized. So it has been exceptionally warm for the last few days. Like, I mean, in the 50s. And so at this point around the farm, most of the snow is actually melted. Like, in fact, the only places where we really even have any snow is over on the sides there, right by the woods. It's really crazy to see just how all the snow has gone away. And I think the even sadder part is the pond hasn't really totally filled up and overflowed like it usually does. And even the pasture hasn't flooded as much. Those are definitely concerning signs. Usually the way the winters work here is we get a lot of snow, Snow builds up, it's cold for a really long time. The ground freezes to concrete, and then come April, everything melts and thaws. But unfortunately, this year is actually the warmest winter we've ever had here, based on the weather readings in St. Johnsbury, Vermont. And we are really well below our usual snowfall numbers. Here we go, that's three fresh eggs, that looks good. Oh, Abby's being a good girl, like she wants these eggs. Sorry, sweetie, you'll have a different breakfast this morning. Any eggs here, Abs? Any eggs? Nope, doesn't look like it. All right, so you guys see this chicken right here? She's actually been going broody. The last couple of nights I've found her trying to sleep inside the house when I go to collect the eggs at night. So I'm really gonna have to work on breaking her of that habit. While the geese don't like to lay eggs where the chickens roost, the ducks don't seem to mind one bit. Duck eggs are always filthy. Hey, Bean, how's it going, sweetie? Oh, poor little Bean. I might have to keep her a little bit different this year given how she's gone blind. Like I'm starting to think that having her free range with the rest of the ducks might not be in her best interest. So I gotta figure something out there. Be careful boys. These two have been tussling a lot lately. So that is Joey Ramon, our steer in the foreground and Macho Man in the background. And I think Macho Man has really kind of finally gained supremacy over Joey, but they still have these sort of sumo wrestling matches on a pretty regular basis. Careful boys, don't hurt each other. Yeah, lately that's actually got me thinking that I'm probably gonna separate them when spring finally hits and I put all the cattle out to pasture. What's most likely gonna happen is Joey Ramon is gonna end up going with the yearling heifers and Macho Man's gonna go back with his ladies. Good morning, Belinda. How are you doing, sweetie? Hi. 
Good to see ya. So Belinda is one of the few gals out here who actually does not look like she's gonna be having any calves anytime soon, which is totally by plan. Meanwhile, over here, I feel like Ariel is my pregnantist cow. Yeah, you don't look too happy right now. You're probably gonna be the first to drop. Like if I had to place a bet, I think Ariel's gonna first to have a calf. Ariel's gonna calf, Annabelle's gonna calf, Anne's gonna calf, and Audrey, who's sitting down over there, is gonna calf. And then the three Charlet, I think those two are actually gonna calf, but that's my other yearling heifer. So yeah, so Alice B. Toklas, as well as Baby B, they'd end up being the two who get paired off with Joey Ramone. And here comes my favorite. Hey, Baby B, come here. Come here, Baby B. Hi, baby bee. How's it going, sweetheart? Where's my brush? I gotta get the brush. Hang on, I'll be right back. Yeah, you love it when I brush you. Good girl. Baby bee has become now pretty much, I think, the second easiest cow to brush or bovine to brush. So Macho Man is still the easiest. Ariel and baby bee, I don't know, I guess they're tied maybe. But I think baby bee is quickly going to take Ariel's slot as the best female brusher. Yeah, that's all your hair? I'm just pulling right out. You're starting to shed. Oh, you're such a good girl, baby bee. Yeah. I'll brush you if you want. Audrey's like, no dice. Baby bee just chased off Ginny. Ginny wants me to feed her, and baby bee wants me to keep brushing her. So in terms of what needs to be done to finish, let's go through the inventory here. Before I do, I gotta say, I'm absolutely loving how this door turned out. It's got a little latch. So I can close it and I can't let barn cats in. I guess I could in theory lock it, but I won't. But yeah, so here we go, we're inside. As you can see, everything's been sealed up. It's actually been a great deal warmer in here, wow. <laughs> like, uh, I, yeah, I don't, I'll get thermometers in here very soon later today, but in terms of temperature, it is significantly warmer inside here than it is outside here. Like it's a noticeable difference. But now given how everything looks, you might be wondering, what do I have to do to finish? And it's really only one major thing is I've got to put a ventilation system in here. So again, the goal for this room is it really needs to be kept between a certain temperature. Like I want to keep it above 60 degrees Fahrenheit inside as well as prevent it from getting up over, I don't know, 90, 95 degrees inside too. And in the summer months, there is the risk of that happening. Because this is up on the second floor, the second floor of a barn usually gets hotter. And then plus I'll have the incubators running, like say if I'm in June or July and I'm hatching chickens. And so I don't want it to get too hot. And on top of that, I'm also gonna be brooding some of the baby birds that I hatch. So the first couple of days of life for all my baby birds are actually gonna still stay inside this room. I have found that if you baby your birds in those first three or four days, you get such bigger, healthier, more robust birds than if I put them outside right out of the gate. On top of that, when they do get to be about four or five days old, I can mix them in with much older birds, like say birds that are two or three weeks old. And so what I typically will do is I will have a weekly hatch. That weekly hatch will start the first couple of days after those birds hatch, they'll stay in here. Then they'll go out to the shed when they hit, I don't know, four or five days old. And that will be just enough time that I'll be getting ready for the next hatch. And so it'll basically be a constant cycle that I'm running pretty much from, I don't know, I'm expecting my first hatches in like early-ish, mid-May. And then that will run until probably, I don't know, early July will be when I stop hatching. Because of that, I need to be able to temperature control this room, not just for the warmth, which I'm gonna have a little electric radiator for, but also to make sure it doesn't overheat. And so that's where, this little ventilation area is gonna come into play. So you've probably noticed that I left a hole over the door and that's because that's where the vent's gonna go. The other day I built this super simple vent. It's really basic. What I did was I got a couple of cheap USB powered fans off of the internet. So see, I got these like little USB cable connections on the back. That's what powers them. And then I cut some holes in a board and I fastened the fans in place with some spray foam insulation. I gave that spray foam insulation a couple of days to dry, and now what I need to do is actually mount this up there. Uh-oh. <laughs> I don't think it's gonna quite fit. The spray foam expanded so far that it creates too much of a lip. You know, actually, as I'm looking at it, I think I wanna mount it this way from the inside, just like that. There we go. It's looking nice and secure. 
And I'll just pull these cords around the side here and I'll set them up here so that I can have a plug ready to go for that. And now you guys might be noticing that there's some daylight there and that it's all exposed. And what I think I'm gonna do is actually build a removable cover that I can put right there so that it keeps everything insulated in the winter. And then when the warmer months come, I can just take it off and then just leave it open until I need to cover it back up again. That looks beautiful. And I only need this one screw to fasten this entire thing in place. And so when I wanna take it off, all I gotta do is take off that one screw too. And now I gotta install these shop lights so that we have illumination inside our room. And by the way, do you guys like this table? I actually built it in a video on my other channel. I built the entire table while wearing an Apple Vision Pro, which was kind of a trippy experience. And you guys might wanna check out that video. I'm starting to hate this app. I will admit I'm kinda of clumsier with this thing on too. I like it, I like it. Nice and bright in here, this is great. That spot suits you well, pal. Good to see you, old friend. So I still have a couple more weeks before I actually have to officially move in here and start hatching, but it is time to now do a really important test and see if I can maintain a temperature inside this room. So I'm gonna start heating the room up and we're gonna check back in tomorrow morning and see how things look. Whoa, did you look at that? What a difference a night makes. We got about a foot of snow overnight and it's really wet and it's really heavy. We'll go up and check the temperatures and see if we were able to retain heat throughout this storm last night. But first I've got animals to take care of. Good morning, large white farm dogs. How are you guys doing? You seem pretty happy. Morning birds! Wow, it is downright hot and humid in here. It's about 25 degrees Fahrenheit outside and easily in the 40s inside. Oh, here we have our chicken feeding frenzy. Abby, they're not dogs. You can't sniff them like other dogs. I know, I know. You, you just mean very good right now. Release the quacking! Oh, looks like we got a couple eggs so far, as well as more duck eggs. Duck eggs are disgusting. Alright, now it's time for the moment of truth. Let's see how well insulated this incubator room is going to be. I don't have a guarantee that this is going to work. Like I've had this vision of building this hatchery and so much of that vision has relied on this concept of me being able to insulate this room. I'm a little bit worried about what my odds are here on this one. So now to test things out, I actually have a special tool that I think will make this a little bit more interesting. What I've got right here is actually an infrared camera. It'll help me sense heat, basically give me like heat vision, if that makes sense. You just basically plug it in just like this. So if you look at it, right, it's actually got like a camera lens right here and here. And so as you look through what things look like, it'll give you a sense of things. Now, if we look actually on the camera, you'll see it's like about 36 degrees right there. So the air temperature inside the barn here is about 36 degrees. But then as I look at the door, that's actually a good sign. It's saying the door is 40 degrees. Let's see what this actually looks like. All right, here goes nothing. Ooh, wow. That's wonderful. Would you look at that? Look at those temperatures. So as I'm looking at things, it's looking like we're in the 60s, like it's in almost 70 degrees up on the ceiling. But then as I look like at the mid range, like right where the incubator is, it's about 65 degrees. And I actually set 
the thermostat on the radiator to about 60 degrees or 65 degrees. So it should be holding at 65 degree temp right down where the radiator is. And it seems like it's working. It seems like actually things are even a little bit warmer than that. I might turn it down just a tad. The lower I turn it, the more energy efficient it is. So that's why I'm trying to like see how low I can push it to keep it that way because that will be like the ultimate setting for this. Now it is probably worth noting that this radiator is actually only temporary. I wanted to see how big a unit I was gonna need to heat things, and it looks like I can actually get away with a slightly smaller unit than this. And what I'm gonna probably end up doing is mounting it right here along this wall. The other thing though I will say I'm noticing is the one spot that's really cold and it seems like I have some air leakage is like right down here. And so I might focus on putting in more insulation. Like right along that edge is where there's a gap and I don't think I insulated that and so I need to insulate that. And then this corner right here, I wanna put more insulation in. I had to leave that part open so that I could have access to the electrical lines, but you can see there's a lot of cold air getting in through there. Obviously there's cold air getting through the door that it's open. The door is always gonna be slightly less efficient, but surprisingly what I've got set up over here where the exhaust fans are, doesn't seem to have a lot of inefficiency, so that's good. So the orange and red is the warmest, the yellow is next, then once you get down to purple and then into blue, that's where it's really cold. You can actually see my tripod looks colder than everything else because it was outside. You know, as I'm looking at it here too, it looks like there's some cracks that maybe I wanna seal in a little bit more as well. And so that'll be some work that I undertake in the next week or two. The good news is, even though I started a little bit behind schedule, I was able to work quick enough that I'm ahead of schedule now. And so I still won't be hatching any eggs for another month. But if you wanna see what it looks like when I do hatch eggs, you should check out this video right here. And I'll be back with more videos very soon, but this is the final video in our Build a Hatchery series, and so, I'll see you next time and I'll probably just be doing chores. Thanks for watching everybody.